Hello everyone, um, in this video I'm going to be showing you the VM creation experience when you are using Azure Arc Resource Bridge. So Azure Arc Resource Bridge as you see on the screen it's currently a preview feature and it provides the capabilities to create virtual machines using your normal Azure portal but the actual virtual machine is created in a local HCI cluster or a VMware cluster. So this, this allows uh, the developers and uh, IT administrators to use the single uh, plane of glass, your Azure portal, to actually create and manage your local uh, workloads and keep, keep the same tool sets to create them and keep it consistent across the board. Um, and then that, that makes it easier for the IT administrators to actually manage their infrastructure on that way. Um, it also in, uh, onboards the virtual machines into Azure Arc so that you can actually keep the, from a security perspective, you can keep the same security governance um, across the board uh, into your virtual machines and manage the virtual machines through the portal as well. So this article provides a bit of a high level uh, it's, uh, overview of what the Azure Arc resource bridge is. And um, what I, for my for the demonstration purposes today, I'm going to be showing you um, how Azure Arc uh, Resource Bridge can be used with Azure Stack HCI to create a virtual machine in a server that is running next to me, just sitting on uh, just sitting next to me, basically. So let's have a look. So uh, what I have done is I have uh, Azure Stack HCI running on that server, and I have actually configured Azure Arc Resource Bridge. Uh, using these instructions as provided in the Azure portal as well. And once it's all configured, you will actually see uh, there are a few resources projected into the um, Azure, um, Azure subscription. So I have my first one, the Stack HCI cluster that I registered uh, along with the um, along with the uh, the initial configurations. I've registered this Azure Stack, uh, Stack HCI, a single node cluster, uh, which has actually uh, been running for some time now. It's got 128 of, uh, gigs of RAM and six uh, CPU cores, and it's currently connected and configured and uh, running all good. Along with that, I enabled the Azure resource uh, Azure Arc Resource Bridge, and that actually created the Azure Arc Resource Bridge relationship uh, status, uh, uh, creating this Azure Arc Resource Bridge resource. And along with that, I have created a custom location, uh, which represents my location, uh, my home as a location. And uh, I have created a image, a local image that I have. Uh, I have created that as a gallery image in the cloud. And also I have represented my local network up into the cloud as well as a HCI virtual network. So all of these are configured as per the instructions that's provided um, in, in the uh, Microsoft documentation. Um, so that's being all configured. Now, how I want to demonstrate to you what the VM creation experience looks like when you actually try to create a virtual machine. So let's go ahead and uh, go towards the Azure virtual machine creation uh, blade. And then when you drop down your create um, button, you basically have an option to create an Azure Arc virtual machine rather than a native virtual machine. So when you actually have configured your Azure um, HCI with Azure Arc Resource Bridge, you will get an uh, get a, uh, a VM creation process like this. Essentially, it asks you. It is very much similar to a normal VM creation process that you do in your uh, portal, and you get asked to, uh, you know, locate the virtual machine in a, a resource group. I will call it as my um, HCI VM one. Uh, as the resource group name, and I will give my virtual machine name as the same um, as that. And then you, for the location, you can actually select a custom location here rather than a normal Azure region. And I'm selecting as my tree BHCI, which is my loc, which represents my local home as a location. It's uh, currently it's uh, this service only available in East US, uh, East US, and um, one other region, I don't recall which one it is. Uh, so it's only to store the metadata actually. So it's 
car, all the activities that is happening uh, right right now in my home, right? So which is in Australia, Perth. But uh, the logical uh, creation of those objects are in this region. So it's, it doesn't really matter for the metadata side of things. But in terms of performance and everything, it's it's pretty much um, pretty much uh, showing me over here as uh, as East US. Um, in terms of the virtual machine kind, it is a stack hit CI one, and then uh, we have the image as the Windows 2022 server. And in terms of process account, I'm not gonna be this generous. So I'm gonna be selecting two cores and a four gigs of RAM. And then for my uh, administrator details, I'm going to give um, these uh, us username and a password in here so that it will help. And then uh, once the administrative credentials are submitted, you can actually go to the disk section where you can attach additional data disks that you want. Um, so the operating system disk comes along with this, uh, but in this case, I am not gonna attach any additional disks. Uh, however, in the next section, when you come into the networking side, I am going to attach a, a, a NIC to this. So I am going to give it a name my HCI VM1, NIC1, and then I'm gonna select the, the projected virtual network that represents my local network, and I'm gonna keep it dynamic so that it will get a DHCP IP address. Once I'm done with that, I click Add, and it represents my ne virtual network. And then uh, along with tags, I will put a description tag, um, test virtual machine, uh, I will call it as HCI machine. Um, and once you're ready, you can go into the review side of things and you can go create the virtual machine. So what this does is it basically connects back to the stack HCI that is running here, uh, just next to me. And it's going to provision um, this virtual machine locally over in my uh, stack HCI. So I'm connected to here, this uh, to my Windows Admin Center, and I'm connected to my Stack CI cluster. And in here, I don't have a virtual machine yet called uh, my test VM one, uh, my HCI VM one. So soon, once it's provisioned, you will see uh, a virtual machine running here. Currently, I have a few. Um, AKS clusters that's running in here and along with the resource bridge virtual uh, appliance that's running in here as well. So let's give it a bit of time and see how the deployment goes. It's not the, it's not taking that long. It is actually already created the virtual NIC and it, it will now create the virtual machine soon and it will mark uh, the deployment as complete. So let's wait for this virtual machines to machine to come up and um, it is now doing the virtual machine. The deployment is created and it is connecting back to the HCI. So the beauty of the HCI is a hybrid connected uh, operating system, which means it talks to Azure and listens um, to Azure instructions for management purposes, which is a really cool feature so that you can sit where you are in the world and you can manage your infrastructure. It doesn't matter where you're accessing it from as far as you have access control to the to the portal with appropriate permissions, you can actually control your infrastructure that is distributed across the, the globe. So for me, the, uh, the advantage in here is like, I don't have um, um, the closest data center for, for Perth is actually Sydney or Melbourne, uh, which is like 15 milliseconds away uh, uh, from here, from Perth. Um, so 50 milliseconds is a considerable amount of latency. And if you have latency sensitive applications that might not have uh, a really good experience in, in application consumption side of things. So you can actually have a stack hits UI for the latency sensitive applications in your own data center hosted and managed in the same way that you normally do um, along with the other virtual machines in the cloud. So as you can see, it's completed now and uh, you can see there's a virtual machines uh, created and it's still coming up um, um, as uh, as it starts. So once it starts properly, you will actually see um, 
the virtual machine um, given an IP once it gathers the IP it will show up in under the network under here uh, because it's still um, booting up it doesn't have the IP address right now in here so um, let's have a look and see on the uh, virtual machine if it has got the IP address it will actually list it in here and it has locally got an IP address for it to be reflected in the cloud it will take a bit of time but what I wanted to show you is let's remote into this um, I, uh, server as well so I have a test VM in here with that correct IP address let's jump into that virtual machine which is the one that we just got created so that's this virtual machine and if you actually uh, check for the latency side of things for this uh, for this virtual machine let's check the latency you will see that it's it's pretty low um, so let's quickly uh, jump into the portal it's not in there but let's this is the IP address that uh, that it was given um, I want to see this IP address in the portal uh, let's have a look if it's got there yet or not it's not so it, it will get the IP address soon enough uh, but let's quickly check the latency from where I am to this virtual machine um, so it's 192.168.7.50 and it is 1 milliseconds or 1 1.5 milliseconds and it's just one router away from me and that is why it's it's having that latency so it's essentially like if you host a virtual machine for me in the Sydney data center it will be 50 milliseconds and uh, it's and you can achieve like low, low latency applications created uh, in the same way that you do um, using the portal um, you only saw uh, we're creating the virtual machines in the portal but you can actually use CLI, PowerShell and also ARM templates. I'll share our blog post uh, where you can actually get all those instructions and I actually used uh, Terraform um, AZ API uh, feature as well to create virtual machines uh, using this um, Azure, Azure Arc resource bridge technology. Um, so that's how you actually create uh, your virtual machines and same way you can actually delete your virtual machines as well um, You can actually destroy your whole resource group and it will actually destroy your um, your uh, Your stack HCI virtual machine and you can actually modify uh, Your resources in here as well and that those ref those changes will reflect so if you go into the sizing side you can actually update your core resources assigned to this virtual machine, which will you will be able to update them locally. Uh, adding adding data disks can be done. Networking wise, if you want to add additional networks or change the networks that it assigns to, and uh, it, it all can be done. And the recommended approach of modifying um, virtual machines that is deployed via the Azure Arc resource bridge is to use the Azure Arc resource bridge. So if you do uh, changes locally, then it won't be reflected and there will be conflicts um, um, uh, by doing that. So it's not recommended to do those things. So that's, uh, that is that. And the virtual machine is, you saw it's available locally. And this is the, um, uh, this is the virtual machine that we are looking at. And as you can see, it is actually running two um, two VM, uh, sorry, two cores and four gigs. And um, yeah, the network is there, and it's pretty much uh, it's a virtual machine, and I can connect to it uh, using my local RDP over here. Um, and I can prove it to you that this is the virtual machine um, because it's got the IP address. IP address of this here. Right, thanks for watching this video. Hope it gave you a, a understanding of what the Azure Arc resource bridge looks like.